through the emails because this is my monthly webinar, so I kind of want to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to see it. So I think I just got to hit send, and then we can begin. So how are you? Just join the room. Thank you for showing up. All right, there we go. So were you part of my um, webinar last night? For those of you who were part of that. All right, so send. Got to print something one more time. So yeah, I've been on here back to back to back, and I'm still not done yet. Got a lot more to go. I actually, a whole day just like slipped by me. I don't know how that happened because I've been making sure that I post the Instagram post every day, but I noticed that I missed the post or something. So a whole day just disappeared on me. Uh, today was supposed to be my day off. Every day is my day off. I, I you know, I choose to do the work, but um, I really thought I didn't have anything to do today okay but what was i thinking okay so now i'm gonna make sure that i make all the other people see this webinar okay so i gotta forward this so you see this is like the behind the work behind the scenes work let me see if i could i might be able to show you on my screen i gotta see oh it gets confusing it gets confusing I might just y'all y'all might not get that extra email. Sorry, I did my best. But those are emails that I had to like go and find from somewhere else and put them all together. But yeah, so today we're talking about black fertility. We're talking about herbal self care, herbal fertility, fertility herbs for self care. We're talking about the giveaway that I have coming up, and um that I might actually kick off tonight once I get this box of herbs open. So let me see, okay, let me just check. Let me check um, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, all right, you hate me. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, YouTube's all right. I was thinking of whether to go on Facebook, but I only got like so many devices that I can actually record on that are gonna, you know, if one doesn't have no volume, another one, the camera goes out on me that's why i got two going on at the same time and if i'm not looking at the camera it's because the camera is like right here at the bottom i don't they should make phones with the the camera in the center on the side so if you turn your camera to the side you're actually looking at the, like why is the camera on on the side anyway it should be in the center right let me stop let me stop so I'm gonna try to send this. Let me get this. Okay. But see, I gotta forward emails because I don't have enough space in my my email per um, sender. So this just makes it like this extra step of work is just that much more difficult. But this is what I'm going through every month. This is why. I have not been sending these email newsletters that a lot of you want to see because I got to do like twice the amount of work for basically one step because I'm running out of space on my, um, what do you call these things? My email provider. I'm just going to call, call it that. Okay. So, uh, okay. I know what I'm doing now. So how's everybody? What city are you from? Simply Danny L. Thank you for joining. What city are you from? Wait, all right, what city are you in right now? See, I'm like one letter at a time. You really got to get into a flow when you're trying to do work. You got to be in that workflow. That's how you really get work done. So it's like if you're trying to like do more than one thing, more than one thing. See, I can't even talk right I'm kind of excited too because, again, like I said, my herbs are here. And if you notice, I've been posting a lot about herbs because I'm really trying to get all you women up on these herbs for fertility because they are no joke, okay? 
they are no joke, right? They actually got stuff from herbs in order to make the birth to get this email thing out the way so I can really focus. Okay, and then I can't, I don't even know what's going on with my, my YouTube. Look at that, YouTube, I've been on here for five minutes and not one person on here, but already on my Instagram. See, this is why I make my my Instagram for Black Fertility because you all actually showed me some love, right? So that's why I make sure that I try to promote Instagram the most out of everything else. So, and you know, it could just be that maybe I'm just not going live, you know, I could go live, you know, that might help. I'm sure it will help, right? Okay, so let's just get this out of this. I'm just gonna put this down and I'm going to knock this out. I'm trying to run so many things at one time. And like right now I'm running the better course and almost done. Okay. I need an assistant, yeah. <laughs> I truly do. I, I've been thinking that I, I could use an assistant. Okay, see, I didn't even put the damn link for the YouTube live in the original video. That's... Mm. How do I do this? How do I do this? Okay, so. Mm. And then I gotta put it on my. <laughs> Okay, so let me get rid of some of this stuff. I don't really need to get rid of some of this stuff. All right. So you're almost there. You're almost there. But the beauty about all this pre-work is that what I've learned or what I've found out supposedly is that, you know, it does take about 30 minutes to really get your audience to even come onto your your channels whatever channel you're on so you know if you're ever going through something like this like don't be discouraged you know um don't be discouraged especially if you're like an up-and-coming doula or you know birth worker fertility strategist right this is what you may be faced with it may take some time but just give it the time that it takes, right? So here's what I might have to do. I might have to send another email. Well, no, I'll put my, my website link up on there. So everybody should be able to see this, at least on, um, on YouTube. But yeah, so there's a lot of preparation work behind just hitting live on a web, you know, whatever you're doing. This a lot, but then you gotta get Twitter, Facebook. Everybody gotta come on, and um, if you don't have somebody to basically help you, you know, it's not gonna look so clean. It's not gonna look so polished and prepped. But I don't mind. So let's do one more Pinterest. Anybody on Pinterest? Anybody on Pinterest, go over there and look for me at Black Fertility. I am on Pinterest. I'm on as much social media as I can. I don't do Tumblr right now, and I don't do, what's the other ones I used to do? I don't do, I'm not on LinkedIn right now. I mean, I'm on there, but I'm not on there as Black Fertility. Not yet. I need to put some time into doing all that. Okay, so here we go. What should I save this under on Pinterest? So if y'all are on Pinterest, go over and follow me. I will follow you back. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Why am I not seeing my videos? Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, go over on Pinterest and follow me. If you're on Facebook, follow me. Look for me as, as Dula Natty or join my group, Black Fertility and Me. Yeah, that's the name of that one, Black Fertility and Me. So if you're in my... YouTube chat, can you just type something in so I can know whether you're still here or whether you are able to hear me or not? Okay. All right, so I think we're good now. I'm just going to check the website. Because 
I've been doing this new thing now where I post my videos on my website. I, I really like it that way. So it's like I'm not just stuck on staring at YouTube and neither are you. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So as you know, I am duly duly. I'm duly. Duly here for you. Right, so I'm Doula Natty. Hello, everybody. You know, I'm going by the term Doula Natty because I found out the other day I was a doula. I thought I was just somebody just out here trying to, you know, spread fertility and the information about it. And, and I found out I was a doula. I am honored, right? Because when I first found out about a doula, it was like there was really not a lot of information about what a doula does. I knew that, um, you know, obviously doulas help you with childbirth and so forth. And I actually think I read about doulas in a book about, you know, how they come and they help you while you're in labor and like they may read poems they may play music they may massage you help you with herbs and so forth but I never met a doula right and I never had a doula I have plenty of babies not one doula but I did have midwives they never spoke about doulas um never offered them I, I don't know why because my, my doula my midwife was very open like she really would um encourage me and give me information I worked at the clinic with her and also with several other midwives right that was like the, probably the best experience that I've had in um, the corporate world right being working in the midwifery mid center but or I was volunteering but there were obviously some some dark sides to it but nothing nothing serious at all um and I actually think they were trying to get me to take over and I wouldn't have mind that part of it but I'm not going to go in because you know, I, like I said, it wasn't nothing that serious. But anyways, so let me introduce myself again. Let me just go in deeper. Um, let me see what I've missed. Doula Natty, volunteer. Oh, yeah, okay. So I've also helped set up my own um, Afrocentric daycare. That was something that was really interesting for me because it's like I had a vision and I was able to manifest it, right? But it, it wasn't nothing um, formal or brick and mortar or anything like that. It was at my home, but it was where I, you know, Afrocentric books and everything just stuff I've never seen I always wanted for my children and you know obviously they were stuff for my children but I was able to open up my doors and share with other people and I'm just that type of person because I also wanted to open up my 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 basement as a recreation center when I moved to this area where there was like nothing there for anybody right and I guess that's ultimately how I came to where I'm at right now um where basically I've been part of a community where we basically just provide uh, resources, food, housing, all type of stuff like that for free. Um, but it's really, again, it's not formal. It's just something that we do, which is kind of like what I'm doing here with Black Fertility, right? Um, I'm taking my time out basically to do research and study so that way I can help to provide you with the information that you may not be able to research and study yourself as far as fertility relates. And I guess why I'm so interested in the fertility part again is because you know as a child um my mother you know she asked me what is it that I want to be when I grow up and I was like a ballerina and she was like oh no you can't make no money doing that and I was like okay whatever and then I wasn't crazy about money anyways but anyways so she basically pulled out this book it was like this thick okay and then she was like I guess she told me to pick something so I just pointed and the word that I pointed at was obstetrician like believe it or not that was the word that I, that I, she pointed I pointed at so I asked her what that meant or she basically told me what it meant and it meant somebody that delivers babies and I was okay with that but then later I found out that you know how these babies are being delivered most most of the time is through cutting the woman's stomach via cesarean section and I was like mm -mm, I'm not doing that I don't want nothing to do with that and so, like, you know, I kind of fell off of that, definitely. But then I found out about um, midwifery. And I think how I found out a bit about midwifery was that I was like, y'all, I might have been, um, <laughs> I don't even know. But yeah, I, I walked up into a midwifery clinic one day, and it was like, it was very open. The doors were open. Um, I didn't feel any type of tension, a very peaceful and relaxing environment and setting, right? So um, it like rekindled, you know, old thoughts and old memories. And I went back to school basically centered, thinking that, you know, I'm going to go to school to go and be a midwife. So 
I took all the courses that I thought that I needed, the science, the physics, all those, the chemistry. Um, and I graduated with more credits and everything that I needed. But would you believe, and I was in the guidance office and all that every day, just trying to make sure that I had everything right that it was going to take for me to become a midwife. But when it actually came time for me to apply for the course, I was there like, oh my gosh, I have more credits than I need, but they're not the right credits. So I really was crushed for like, I was in denial, y'all. For three years, I went back to the same school and applied with the same form and paid the same fee and got back the same response every single time. You do not have the right amount of credits to take this course. And I was like, how, how, how? I've taken, I've taken all the advanced credits and all the, you know, I've, I've taken extra courses, extra credits, made sure to raise my grade on the grades that were low by taking night school courses and online courses. And it's like one day I just said, you know what, I'm done, right? So what happened after that? I guess I just, you know, I just basically just kind of accept, came to terms with that and just accepted that, you know, I'm probably not going to be a midwife anytime soon, but luckily, you know, I, I kind of knew that with midwifery, at least it's something that women do tend to even get into very later on in life, like after they've left the corporate world and so forth. So I, I kind of, I just like reserved it to that. Right. And then, um, <clears throat> let me just make sure I have my cord ready. So when this Wi-Fi decides that it wants to stop working and plug it in. So, yeah, so. I just kind of like just said, okay, I just accepted it. I came to terms and like, you know, I had children by then. I had like two babies. So it's like, for me, I write credits and write courses and everything like that. But it still was like just so much other things going on in my life that I just kind of just took a step back. But um, <clears throat> I guess how I came to the Black Fertility, um, how I, how I came to decide to do this, I'm always been I have always been somebody who always is like um trying to like strategize and plan these grand schemes and everything like that. And um, you know, basically just working things out in my head and um so black fertility basically was just one of the things that I was going to do. You know, something else I was gonna do was help women with fibroids. Before I was working on black fertility, I was also working on creating um a website for women who have fibroids to know how to heal their fibroids naturally because for me again I'm very on the natural side like I always am trying to do things naturally my parents are from Jamaica I'm always hearing stories about the hills and the mountains and this bush and that, that and this tree and that fruit so it's like the whole the whole synthetic and the whole uh um thing is done in order to get what you want um, as a routine method, it just didn't sit well with me, right? So, and I realized that a lot of people don't know this information. Like, most women don't know that they have fibroids until they go for, like, a routine checkup. And the doctor or the gynecologist says, you know, you got 20 fibroids ranging in size from this small to this big, right? So, and then I'm I'm finding out that a lot of these things can be healed naturally, but yet women are getting their wounds tore out of their stomach. And, like, even before I consciously decided I was going to do this one I made a video like ooh, it has to be like 12 years ago right and the video I made was talking about um vaginal meshes because I I had learned that a woman were getting vaginal mesh put into their cervix I guess to keep their their womb from prolapsing from collapsing out and these vaginal meshes were starting to basically attached to the the skin or the you know the tissues inside of their cervix and it was causing damage because the cervical mesh is like made out of like some type of wire I guess I mean just listen to it all right so that was one of my videos I made even before I was like consciously deciding to again do black fertility right but so let me get into what I want to talk to you about now because that's just a little backstory little history and um I guess I'll finish it off by saying that I've had all my babies naturally I don't know what it's like to have a baby in a hospital, you know, other than maybe seeing it on TV or going there for the, the um, the, you know, the midwives, they do try to get you to at least toward the hospital. So I've done that, but I've never, you know, so I like, you can, you can have a baby naturally. If you are skeptical, if you are scared, if you are cautious about that, 
just know that the human body, your body was built and designed for this. And if you maybe feel that like you have a small pelvis or you have, um, you're going to have certain issues, you need to work on that now. That's why you have the whole nine months is to deal with a lot of the interpersonal parts of your body um, to heal any past hurts that may interfere with you and whatever other means, right? But again, I'm not trying to say is that say that this is a cure all or you know it's going to heal all just because you start to do whatever, right? But you want to at least open your mind, right, to different possibilities, right, including the power that you have within you, right? So there we go. So okay, so next I want to talk about fertility herbs for self care, and then we're going to get into the unboxing of the herbs that I got that I am so excited to open today because i'm tired of waiting i've been waiting and i've been waiting and i've been waiting right <laughs> finally on so one of these videos my dad soon probably gonna be my instagram so if you're on instagram you want to head over to my youtube or to the um to my website right okay so why do i say fertility herbs or self-care right and part of that is because a lot of times People think that, you know, the herbs are bitter and they're nasty and they're gross and they're disgusting and they can't stand it and they don't want to drink no tea and they don't want to be in the bathroom peeing and, you know, urinating or, you know, doing number two. And, um, like, the idea of cleansing might just raise just um, thoughts in their mind that they're really not trying to have, right? But I want to introduce you to the idea of herbal our fertility herbs as a self-care method, right? Or as a self-care practice, because yes, these herbs may be bitter, but those are the herbs that are actually good for you. Those are the herbs that are going to get rid of the excess estrogen. Those are the herbs that are going to tone your body. A lot of times they're going to cleanse the liver. They're going to get the toxins out of your body, right? And when you do this, right, the amazing thing is that your skin starts to clear up. Your skin clears because your skin is basically the largest organ on your body. So when you are flushing the toxins out of your body, sure, you may go through um, an experience where maybe you, you, you may break out or, you know, you may experience certain emotions that, like, you, you, you know, may be depressing, right? Um, maybe it may be anger and it may be a lot of these things, right? But again, the liver is connected to... Um, the emotion anger so if you are somebody who may be angry a lot you may want to cleanse focus on cleansing your liver so the next thing is that um the next thing is that when it comes to fertility herbs can you see um can you see him with the water <laughs> they're gonna act like they don't hear. hey okay whatever so the next thing is that cleansing with fertility herbs as a self-care practice is one that you should consider because it can act, you can actually learn to love this stuff. Like I love when I take herbs. I like I'm excited to see a box of herbs, whether it's in powder form, tincture form, because I know that these things are gonna give to me and my body what um certain fruits cannot give me, what certain people cannot give me, what certain um, you know entertainments cannot do for me like this this is like long-term care for my body it's long-term health and healing for me right and it's not even necessarily just healing because you know sometimes people do get caught up on the healing thing but it's also like a preventative method for uh, from a lot of issues that a lot of people are facing today like you'll be surprised just what these herbs can do as far as relieving stress helping you to lose weight um balancing your hormones getting you sexually amped up you know arousing your sexuality you know because a lot of times it's like you do you can get older your hormones can go out of balance and you can just lose it all just be like mm, whatever and just just be in a in a different type of mood that was not the youthful vibrant you right i'm not saying that you all that you need to take these herbs and use them as viagra or aphrodisiacs but you need that sexual energy right you need that that prana and that chi to be flown like all your energies should be in a constant state of flow and should be balanced in motion and like the herbs they help to you know create that circulation and i want to also say they help to create an auric 
circulation if you if you deal with that type of stuff, right? So fertility herbs for self-care is definitely something that you should look into and consider because again with what I with what I encourage people to do on my um live one on one one on one calls where I tell you that you know you may want to create a strategy and a routine and a plan and be able to take these herbs from 30 to 90 days, right? Or more, depending on your situation and your circumstance, you may decide that, oh my God, that's too long. I want a baby right now. I don't have time for that. I got this money in the bank. I'm going to go over to this center and they're going to do this, that, and the other with my eggs and my womb and they're going to, and I'm going to have a baby. And you know, you can be disappointed when you find out that they're giving you things at the wrong time of your month that they're giving you things that re reduce your cervical mucus which makes the sperm not want to or makes it hard for the sperm to um survive in your vaginal canal or uterus uterus what is a uterus your uterus right so basically um you, you may not get pregnant like it's not a solution right you you need to help your body right um because if, if you're if you're body if you're not fertile, just think about it this way. Fertility used to be something that were revered, heavily sought after, heavily worshipped. There were fertility gods in ancient history, right? Uh-uh. There are fertility gods in ancient history, or so they were called, right? And um people wanted the land to be fertile, right? Just think about it. if you don't have fertility, you you don't have existence. You don't have nothing here. No plants, no food, no people, nothing. You, you can even say no planets. You can even include them into the idea of fertility. So if you're not fertile right now, it is something that is out of balance about you. And it is not necessarily that you're missing some drugs in your body. You, are not la you do not have a lack of drugs. You do not have a lack of surgical care. Hey, stop fighting, man. Stop it. Leave them alone. They're, they're fighting over a spray bottle. Right, okay, so yeah, you're you're not lacking surgical equipment or a medical center, right? You may be lacking some nutrients, you may be lacking some sunlight, you may be lacking some D, because some of y'all not even getting that. Like i you know, I've done the survey and you know, I, I did ask some personal questions for a lot of you. And, you know, that was one of the things that came up was that, no, you don't need to bring that in here. Go put that up. So, yeah, that was one of the things that also came up is that some of you are, they're just not doing it enough, not doing it at the right time, um, not doing it enough during the week, or you may be doing it too much where basically, take the breaks off it, take the breaks, where basically um, he now is uh, lacking good semen count because maybe you're doing it too close together but you know i think i made a video about the male fertility cycle or his menstrual not menstrual cycle just a male fertility cycle i think i made a video about that it should be up there but anyways so I'm trying to see where i left off oh yeah so there's a lot of things that can um help you again conceive naturally and you're not like you're not lacking to get any of these surgical equipments but you may be lacking some nutrient equipment nutrient equipment do you see what's going on today? Y'all naturally <laughs> Y'all are naturally lacking nutrient equipment. Okay, let's get into what this natural equipment is. Because I'm ready to to open up this box of herbs, but <laughs> let me just correct that. You may be lacking certain nutrients that again the herbs can provide you with and can boost help boost your fertility because you you need you need certain things. Some of these herbs they help to balance your hormones. They help to balance your hormones. Your hormones are very key. But one thing a lot of women also don't know is that your hormones, and let me tell you something. Some doctors don't know this stuff. Some doctors do not study this stuff. Some some doctors are not taught this stuff in a way that where they can effectively provide you with certain care. But or they don't acknowledge it in their practice, right? Your hormones need to be in balance. And not only that, but the reproductive hormones, and I think I've said this in another video, but the reproductive hormones are not primary. <clears throat> Just put it down. Just take it from me. But the reproductive hormones are, um, they are not primary hormones. So they are like backup hormones, secondary hormones, 
they only they only work if everything else in your body stop crying stop crying so you're not gonna play with that right so they, they only function good if your other hormones are imbalanced so if your stress level is too high it can rob your body of a hormone called progesterone right and you need pro- progesterone at a certain point in your cycle so something like that you can leave him alone just just, just take the thing from him you're not gonna get this spray bottle. I'm gonna go home. But anyways, yeah, you know how they get. They probably were surprised. Like so again, so your your sex hormones, your reproductive hormones, are not primary hormones. There's like four sets of hormones, and the reproductive hormones is like, look, if you don't get that stuff together, I'm just not here for it. Y'all do your y'all thing. You want to be, mm, go ahead and be, mm, and I'm going to sit over here and I'm going to, you know, chill. Y'all not going to deplete me. And just think about it. Like, for women, you're, you don't even get your menses until, you know, you get to a certain age, right? So it's kind of like, that shows you that these hormones are not primary hormones. They, like, they don't necessarily have to be there. They don't necessarily have to, or certain other things have to be in place before they are activated, Right? And again, yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, again, back to the whole fertility thing. Yes, they're part of your fertility and all that. But again, they have their place. And, you know, just like you're not always having intercourse, right? So it's the same thing. Just put that thing in the garbage. So, okay. So now we're going to get into the unboxing. And I'm just trying to... I thought I had a knife like right beside me, so I'm gonna have to put. Can you pass this to me for a second so I can use it? I'm just gonna use this to sort of keep this up here while I open it my herd. So I gotta just get this flat. So I like my live last. Hold on, I gotta finish. I gotta fix this up. Okay, so I did a live yesterday. Oh no. See, I can't see on this. I gotta make sure I gotta get this going right. So I got a screen on here. Mm-mm, this 20%. This fertility secrets dot wordpress dot com. Otherwise you may get cut off on the live. And I might even have to end it because it might not save. So I'm getting ready to open up my my box. Okay, my box of herbs right now. So if you want to see what's in the box, come to my website at blackfertilitysecrets.wordpress.com, right? Or go onto my YouTube. I'd rather, you know, my YouTube is playing live on my videos, self-care. I think that's what it is, fertility herbal self-care. Or go to your email if that's how you found out. And um, again, click on the link to my website, right? So I'm going to end this just so... I will make a whole post about that and post it on my Instagram. What else? And more about Black Fertility on the YouTube. That's what I'm doing my monthly webinar. So I'm going to complete that there. So I'm going to end this. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's just see who tuned in because I like to do this. All right. So we had From Justice to, to You. We had Simply Danny. We had Apply Pressure. We had... That was Apply Underscore Pressure. We had... Feel, feeling empty wounds and we had i am miss missy b all right so again for these herbs i definitely want to give a special thanks to miss shy shy because she basically helped me to acquire these herbs and some of them are herbs that i wouldn't basically wouldn't have even gotten right now i don't know how to put them on forever live on youtube but this phone is um is getting hot and It's getting hot and I don't want it to die and not be safe. So let's see. Who needs a knife? I don't know, I can use my hands. Okay. So I don't remember getting this the last time. I must have ordered some glass. They're gonna fight over this, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna fight over some air in the bag. 
All right, so let me make sure I got all my stuff. She was on the shelf. All right, so I think I need another aromatherapy diffuser. I'm just gonna let you know what I got before I open up. So I got some amla powder. Got shatavari. What you know about that? I got um, milk thistle. Y'all seen I've been posting my milk thistle. I got maca. I got raspberry leaves, and I got alfalfa. So either one or all of these herbs, I will probably be giving away as a giveaway or i may just get you all your own herbs so this is the alfalfa this is the amla powder see there this is the milk thistle this is the shatavari i've been trying to get this for over a year okay this is the maca I got some more maca, and this is another herb I have not had in over a year, so it's the maca. Yes. <laughs> so those are, this is, oh my gosh, okay. So I might have to go ahead and order y'all your own set of herbs because in delivering in your own little box because, like, I need this stuff right now, and I've been putting it off for, this has been at least, um, it's been at least a week since I've had my my herbs. I ran out of maca. I didn't get any fenugreek this time because the reason I didn't get fenugreek is because you know I'm breastfeeding, right? So let me see. I didn't get fenugreek this time because the shatavari, the amla, the milk thistle, the maca, and the alfalfa. <laughs> Like, all of this is supposed to be helpful for not only fertility, but for breast milk. Um, right? This is about to knock over my whole setup. I think I'm going to have to put it back on this box. Okay, hold on. Let me show you. So, this shot of body, I've never have had it as a powder before, but it's been so long. I don't know. I haven't had anything clumpy like this in a while. Sometimes maca can get this clumpy. Yeah, it is bitter. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and lie, but I can eat me some bitter herbs. Like, it's nothing. They have something in Jamaica called Cersei tea, right? And um, Cersei must have a lot of progesterone in it or something, but because they use it for um, they use it. They can use it for abortion. Basically, it's very very bitter. Like, this is milk so I imagine it's going to be bitter. I haven't had this in a long time either. Okay, so we're going to do a little taste test on everything here. We're just going to go ahead. And I'm not taking I'm not taking a lot. I'm just, like, taking, like, a, a, a dime size. I'm looking at my face before I really taste it. It's actually not that bad. But, like, my, my gut reaction is to just, like, eat. But you see, I'm not, I'm not too different from you. I feel like sometimes these herbs are too They don't taste like rotten cookie dough. <laughs> I'm probably not helping some of you to go ahead and take these herbs. But, you know. Mm. It definitely tastes like. <laughs> it definitely tastes like some rotten cookie dough. But, you know, rotten cookie dough with sugar in it. <laughs> okay. All right, so get my clothes dirty. So Amla, this is one I've never, ever, ever had before, all right? So here we go, Amla. And yeah, all these herbs that I'm taking, they're pretty safe. I've done my little research. Whoa. Mm. Hey, go that way. Mm. Go that way. Go that way. You're gonna be in. Mm. Mm, okay. Amla is supposed to be a seat in it on the according to the auric value scale. However, it's just something that they measure like vitamin C content, and that includes vitamin C such as in goji berries. What other berries? Um, acai berry. Mm. So, 
they're supposed to be even higher than all of those definitely higher than orange so don't let anybody tell you oh you can't get no um things from yeah so don't let anybody tell you you can't get your nutrients from fruits and vegetables and stuff like that you can get them from some herbs you see stuff growing in your backyard on a tree and now i'm going to go ahead and taste some alfalfa which i already know how this is going to go like oops, that's too much and y'all these are my herbs for my personal use so you know i can do basically whatever i want with them okay I gotta finish this on my hand. Okay, so alfalfa is supposed to be named after like a horse. And it tastes like a horse. It it it, it does taste yeah, it's called it's uh, named after I think it's Sanskrit or something for the smell of a horse. It does smell like a horse and taste like a horse. Okay, so this is my raspberry leaves. So of course I you know it's still in leaf form because raspberry doesn't really powder very well you can get some powders in like the now brand and so forth but i'm trying to see if it tastes like raspberry because i used to pick raspberry when i was younger i wasn't too much younger but when i was um pregnant with my daughter i, I lived somewhere where there was raspberry growing everywhere i'd be at the bus stop picking raspberry to go home and make tea and picking actual raspberries out here they got a lot of um blackberries i even found a blackberry tree there's a blackberry bush here and there's a blackberry tree um there's not really much different the leaves you can use them to brush your teeth right so these herbs are very versatile look some of y'all need to get up out of these grocery stores right need to get into nature right i need to get experiencing your body and everything that comes with just being one with the environment and being one with nature so the next part of this webinar i guess is what we're going to do about this give this giveaway because i want i really want to do a giveaway i want to give something away for everybody who was part of my five day fertility herbal challenge right that was like i really enjoyed doing that it was actually my first challenge that i've done and i really 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 in my first challenge that i've done with you all it's really it, i really enjoyed it see because i got herbs all over myself you like my little outfit i would stand up with you. okay and i just did have a baby so I really like it. I think it's cute. I want more of them, so I don't know where where to get some more of these. But like these two. I can make this actually, but I like parts of this. Anyways, that was just some of what I wore today. Some of what I wore. I should stand up on the chair and show y'all some. I don't know. Some might fall out. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, so yeah. I meant to show y'all my before and after of my um my Sunny Greek maca challenge of my breasts. They they really did get a little more filled with milk. Like they're still filled with milk right now. Like normally my um normally my breasts they kind of will go flat like if I have not been drinking enough or eating enough or any of that stuff. And it's been like over two weeks now i think since i've had any fenugreek, greek and my breasts have basically kept their shape and it's not just because i'm breastfeeding that breast don't let nobody tell you that breastfeeding gonna keep your breasts looking popping for the rest of your life it's not true i've been breastfeeding for maybe 13 years 14 years something like that and um mm -mm. they will go they will just shrink on you so this is this is some improvement i got cleavage i got some cleavage but anyways i'm playing y'all I'm just trying to have fun with this little live here because it's my first live that I did and ain't nobody show up. <laughs> so it's just me. So anyways, I'm joking. So let me go have me a little granola bar because like I said, it's just me here. Oh, okay. So now I got somebody in the room. So now y'all you, you, come when I was just about to eat. Okay, I'm not going to do it. 
hate on this thing. Let me think about that. Do I want to eat on live with you right now? I don't know, but what I will do is sip some tea. It has no sugar in it. I used to drink all my tea with no sugar, no honey. It's only very recently that I've been drinking it with um, honey in it. I cannot stand agave. When I first tried agave, it made my, like, it just, it was, it just excited my body too much. Like, it, it really kind of, like, it was borderline headache-ish. So that's why I don't really recommend a lot of you switch to agave. And I know um, I've learned that women with PCOS cannot necessarily take um, honey because I guess it may spike the insulin level. Um... So in that case, I, I guess stevia would be better. Or, you know, sometimes you really have to just go sugar-free. A year ago, not a year ago, um, years ago, when I was living in my apartment, um, for at least a year or more, I went without sugar. Like, I just never bought sugar. The only time I would ever have anything with sugar in it was when I would go to my mother's house. And I would always get, like, a mad headache, a, a very intense headache. And it took me a while to realize that it was because when I was going to her house, I would be drinking the juice. And um, the, it was basically the sugar in the juice, the juice that was causing me to have headaches. But I went a whole year with no sugar. And I'm let me tell you, you don't need sugar. You don't need sugar, per se. You, may, you do need sweets in your body for your like i feel like you do need the five um taste the salty sweet um spicy what is the other one salty sweet spicy i don't know if the other one is pungent and i don't know what the other one is um why can't i think of bitter so again back to that bitter you need your bitters right you need your bitter but I think the other one is called, it's either like a pungent or an edible, a umami type flavor. They got this thing called umami, and it's basically where all the tastes are just right. But I think I'm getting a little aside of myself, and we need to be going into black fertility and what black fertility is all about. So I just want to basically also let you know that if you go to my website, called Seven Steps to Black Fertility, on here, but I'm gonna an extra thing. You can get my seven steps to black fertility, and this is basically what has been the foundation of black fertility and um how I form like what why I'm teaching what I do. Um, you know, these are the notes I was taking when I really just was just in my room, just met what steps you would need to take in order to better yourself right and so one of the steps basically is to stop thinking that you cannot ovulate right right and another step is basically to know when you ov, right you need to live fertilely but let me just go into because it's been a while since i've actually looked at these steps it's use natural fertility products which is why i am introducing the idea of fertility herbs fertility supports and lastly get a fertility strategy strategy session with yours truly me of course and the reason why i feel like these steps are so key and so vital is because sometimes if you are going through um a fertility situation or infertility i don't like to use the word infertility or um fertility issue i really like to call them fertility messages because i really feel like these are your body giving you messages on what you need to do in order to get your body in the right balance and um so that you can conceive, right? Because if you are so-called infer infertile, uh, or if you're balanced, if you're so-called stress and your stress is leading to infertility, you don't have a fertility um coming to terms with that you may, you know, actually focus on that and try to find ways that are de-stressing because you actually can de-stress. You can do yoga to help your body relax. You can um again take some of these herbs to help to relax. Uh, you don't just have to sit there and just wallow or just um, build up anger and, you know, resentment and so forth for your partner or for you out of them. 
I wonder if any of these are maca it should help you to de stress and also balance your hormones. Um, ashwagandha, what is this? 